Sandhill cranes have lived on Earth for centuries. They're some of the oldest bird species in the world. There are fossil records that take them back a couple million years. But these birds still amaze those who watch them. They're beautiful birds, tall, graceful. They're fascinating, majestic, wild. These are spectacular birds. They've got a five-foot wingspan. They're large, four feet tall, and they're just an iconic bird. They're very social, so they're interesting to watch how they interact. Pushed to the brink of extinction in the 1800s by loss of habitat and unregulated hunting, the eastern sandhill crane has made a remarkable comeback. These migratory birds spend their summers in the northern U.S. and Canada, around the Great Lakes, breeding and raising their young. Their first few breeding attempts, they may go through different mates because they're usually not successful the first few times. Once they have successfully reared chicks, then that pair will stay together for life. The young bird will stay with the parents for about nine months. They feed together, fly together, do everything together. For many years, the Sand Hills would only pass through Tennessee on their way to Florida for the winter. But when the TWRA started planting corn to attract waterfowl at the Hiawassee Wildlife Refuge, the cranes began stopping here. If they've got plenty of food, the weather's warm enough, why bother migrating any further? So it's tended to build up a population here in the winter. Now as many as 20,000 birds will spend the winter at Hiawassee from late November through February, to the delight of bird watchers who come to look and listen. The sound that they make is just an incredibly haunting sound. Once you've heard it, you'll never forget it. Susan Holliday finds the cranes especially thrilling. For the past 12 years, she's made a point of volunteering at the annual Sand Hill Crane Festival, offering her expertise and her spotting scope so that others can see these birds in a new way. There's a mixture there of uh, Sand Hill Cranes and Great Blue Herons. One of my most favorite moments when I do this is to get somebody looking through a scope they may never have done that before and suddenly they see one of these beautiful sandhill cranes and their eyes just light up. About that, I can tell you saw them just by that smile on your face. <laughs> Started in 1992, the festival brings thousands of people to the refuge to celebrate a conservation success story. There's not many places you can go in Eastern North America and have a wildlife spectacle like this. You don't have to be an avid birder to, I think, come out and really enjoy looking at the sandhill cranes. They'll tuck their wing in and catch some more air, and they can lift this one up to make a real sharp turn, and it was, it's just amazing to me. They're an awkward, almost, looking bird until you see them flying, and then you can see the aerodynamic nature of their wings, the way in the flock they're going to move together. The festival brought out a lot of people this year, but some longtime supporters of the event decided not to come. That's because they're upset about a controversial decision by the TWRA to allow Sandhill cranes to be hunted. I want to welcome you all to the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission meeting. In August of 2013, the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission considered a proposal to create a Sandhill crane hunting season, hearing comments from both sides. People are going to get mad because you're going to be killing something they love, a beautiful animal that in harm in anybody, in harm in anything. Several other states already have crane seasons, including our neighbor to the north, Kentucky. It has had minimal impact on the population. Our membership consists of both hunters and non-hunters. We support regulated hunting. We do not support the Sandhill Crane season. The farmers were in agreement that they wanted a season because they thought it would help the predation on their crops. The cranes eat everything. The sandhill cranes are more valuable to the citizens of Tennessee as a living resource than as a dead animal. It's a social issue that you need to be making a decision on, not a biological issue. But the TWRA decided that biology would drive the decision. The number of cranes had grown to the point where they could sustain a hunting season. Although concessions were made that the wildlife watchers appreciated. We limited the length of the season, limited our maximum harvest to try to start out conservatively, make sure that we take things easy. The outcome disappointed most bird enthusiasts. 
There's no question that the size of the population can support a hunt. It's really a larger question than whether or not sandhill cranes are hunted. The agency, their mission statement has nothing to do with hunting, but the hunters that are required to pay licenses, they pay taxes, they have had a tremendous effect on bird conservation, land acquisition in the state. But there isn't an equivalent opportunity for the non-game people to participate in that way. And hunters and uh, wildlife watchers need to find a way that folks that appreciate wildlife can all be contributing. I didn't want it because the birds are just special. It's an iconic species. Numbers wise, yeah, the eastern population can probably tolerate some hunting for a while. What mitigated it a little bit for me was the fact that the federal government has oversight on this and they will be keeping track of the numbers of the population. I'm not seeing anything other than that one group mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. There are lots of people keeping track of the birds. University of Tennessee at Chattanooga professor David Aborn has been studying the cranes at Hiawassee and the surrounding area for over 12 years. We're keeping track of how many there are, where they are, on the refuge, off refuge, what are they doing, radio tracking cranes to monitor movements and behavior of individuals over long periods of time. Dirt mound. David and graduate student Michael Colbert plan to spend the next few years gathering new information to compare with his previous work, trying to determine the full impact of the hunt. I am not against hunting and I'm not even against crane hunting because cranes are hunted in about 10 western states. Hopefully the data that I collect can help improve the hunt and make the management plan a little bit more effective and more appealing to all sides, the, the hunting and the non-hunting communities. I hate to think that it will diminish the support of the agency. There are a lot of good things the agency does and certainly the contributions that the hunters make to land acquisition and conservation cannot be underestimated. While she too is disappointed by the decision to hunt the cranes, Susan Holliday is glad to have the opportunity to see them in person. It's just good to be a part of this world where you can actually come out and see these spectacles. When I'm watching the sandhill cranes and other birds in nature, it gives me a very, very good feeling to know that I'm connected with that and realize how connected we all are. And that may explain why so many people care about cranes. I'm Ken Tucker on the Wild Side.